Okay, what we're going to do today, we're going to talk quickly about the Atlas because it's finished. Um, behind the Atlas over here, we've got the RGS that's for sale. We've put the two together because we've got the one for sale, which is in Touring Trim. And we've got my one that's in Clubman Trim. So the chance to see two together. Then we've got, we've got a pair of commandos here. This one on the end here is the customer's one. We're briefly going to talk about that. And something a little bit different, on the other side of the workshop, we've got one of the early generation Hinkley Triumphs. Now this one is the 900 Sprint, it's my bike, I've had it for a very long time. Uh, 96, it was manufactured. Um, there's a problem with it. And the problem is that the forks bang like mad. Now, I've put new fork legs in, there's a pair of old legs up there, up on the shelf. But when you hit a bump or anything, the whole of the fairing shudders and shakes. And because the roads now are so bad with the potholes, it's not a nice bike to ride. Because these are great. They, they eat up the miles. And as old as it is now, it's still a very good bike. So there's a company that was very good at supplying parts and they will help me out. But I just need to find out what's going on. We've got one or two other little jobs we're going to do. So we're going to show you those jobs on a more modern Triumph. It's still a carburetor model. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to that one a bit later on. So from that, we're gonna talk now, a little bit of luck. Alex turned up today with these products from Rock Oil. Now Rock Oil are supporting his um, off-road bike. Can't remember what it's called now. IT490. The? IT490. IT490. Yeah. Uh, so he had these products given to him and he's got a surplus and he's brought them along here for me to use in the workshop and to share amongst the people that are doing the channel, as you know. So yeah, we're gonna use those and um, it'd be nice to try something a little bit different. So that's that. Now, we're gonna talk about the Atlas first. Now, the last time we saw this running, we had the tank off, we had a little tank up here at the engine running. I mentioned at the time that the carbs are quite worn and I suggested that we put a single carb on here, a new carburetor with a manifold, air filter and new cables. The customer's decided to finish that himself. Um, they are quite worn, but he wants to put some, he's got some concentric carburetors that he's going to put on there. So that's fine, that's down to him to do. But it would have been quite nice to have done the conversion with a new carburetor and you would have heard that running really sweetly. It runs fine now, but it does draw a bit of air, as we know on that tick over. It gets warm, it starts to speed up a little bit. Some people have said in the comments that potentially you should refurbish those existing carbs. What do you say to that? Well, the bodies are quite worn. Um, to be honest with you, I think I've mentioned before, with, with the Commando, um, I can't show you here because they've both got single carbs on, but the Commando, when it came out, it had a pair of um, concentric carbs. Now, they run nice together. You've got a bit more room. When I showed you the monoblocks, the, the actual idle air screws, because of the angle of the carburetors, they are touching almost. They're quite fiddly to get to the pilot air screws to adjust those. If I was going to put twin carbs on here, they, what the customer's doing, he's got a pair of carbs that should be the right number. If he refurb refurbishes those, it should be okay. I think these ones, the time you spend, the bodies are quite worn. Okay, we know we could get them bored in oversized slides, but I think you'd be better off for what it would cost you to put a pair of concentrics on. Or why not you just go and put a single concentric with a single manifold? You don't lose much in power. And to be honest with you, we've got two commandos here and they've both got single carbs. And you know, the one I've got has got an SU carburetor and the one that we're gonna show has got a Mikuni. A lot of people do take carbs, you know, twin carbs off and go to single carb, because what you lose in performance is, is nothing really, to be honest with you. Okay, we're just gonna show you the bike running. We know we haven't done the, the carburation modification to it, but we're just gonna fire it up for you. So power on for the coils, mag switch on. Hello. 
okay, just recap on what we spoke about before. Because the carbs are a bit warm, the bodies, when it gets warm, it starts sucking past the slides to get more air. At the moment, the slides are right at the bottom of the position, the carburetor. It doesn't sound too bad now, but it takes a while to come down to tick over. The pilot air screws are as rich as they will go, almost. Uh, but it would have been nice to have put a single carb on here, or I say, you could put a pair of concentrics on here. But it's finished, it's done. Okay. So, why does, the, why does it change when it gets hot? What happens? What's going to be the symptoms that the bike's going to have when it gets be hot? Because it's sucking air past slides a little bit, there's a tendency for this to run a bit weak. And you don't want to let it run so weak. So, you mean lean? Yeah. Yeah. It run lean, basically, and then cause the engine to overheat, really. You want a slightly richer running than this. But the customer's going to sort it out himself, that's fine. Um, he's got a pair of concentrics, he can fit those, but I would like to have finished it with the single carb conversion, really. running past an hour and it takes a while to come back down. But mechanically it's good. It's had a rebore. We've got another barrel assembly, new pistons. We've done a lot of work on this engine. It's nice and clean. There's no smoke, nothing at all. What we've got here, right in front of me, we've got the RGS, this one here, which is the one for sale, which is in Torin trim. And as a comparison for people, we've got my one alongside, which is in Clubman trim. So you can see the differences. We were talking the other day about, you know, touring trim and, and Clubman trim. So yeah, that one is still for sale. Um, anyone interested, it's nice. You've heard it running. So what's on the end here? Well, we've got the Mark II Commando. So this is 1972, it's a 750. It wasn't here before. Um, the reason it came back, uh, the customer said it was revving quite high. He got quite a low gearing on here. So his rear sprocket on his gearbox was a 19 tooth. Now we put that up to 21 tooth sprocket, new sprocket. I mentioned at the time that I'll probably check the chain, put a new chain on as you needed to extend it. So he's got a new chain with half link in there as well. Clutch is obviously all stripped down, so we've done the conversion when we put that back in. We put the push rod seal on the end of the main shaft, so it stops any oil from possibly coming along the push rod inside and getting into the clutch plates. Another thing that people sometimes get wrong when you've got a main stand, they sometimes look at a rear chain, and this one, right, they go, oh, that's quite slack. And it's a big mistake people make, I'm not saying that many do it, but they adjust that chain on the main stand and take that slack up. Now as soon as you push that bike off the main stand and you put your weight on here, that swing arm is slightly compressed, that chain tension will change. When you've got a rigid frame bike, it doesn't matter because nothing's going to move, but when you've got um, you know, a swing arm, everything does move. So this is a, a new chain on, on, on the bike now. And this is the sort of really movement you should have when the bike's on the main stand. When we push that off, you always look for tight spots as well, because um, they do sometimes change a little bit. The other thing that does sometimes get over adjusted is the primary chain. We've got a triplex chain in there, and it applies to any bike that's, you know, whether it's a pre unit or unit construction, never over adjust your primary chain because what it does, it loads up the crankshaft. And the same with the rear chain, you can load up that gearbox because it puts a lot of pressure on the bearings, the sleeve gear bushes, it loads it all up. And quite often it happens with trials bikes, people overload those because they've got a long swing arm, a lot of movement, and if you overjust it, everything will go really, really tight and it wears things out and you get all sorts of problems. So we're gonna push this one. This one's a little bit different. It's got 
It's got a Mikuni carburetor. We have had it here before, like I said, and fired it up. So it has a cold start choke here. It will make it run slightly fast. So when I fire it up, it will run fast and I'll take the choke off. But it makes it a very economical bike with single carburetor. So this is quite a common thing that people do. They don't want the hassle of two carbs, keeping the carbs in tune, cables come out of adjustment, one carb, one cable. Doesn't get any easier than that really. So we're, we're just pushing forward. We give it a clean up and I need to take it out for a road test just before it goes back to the customer. Um, quick reference to this, Roadster, 1972, 750. The customer's obviously taken the indicators off. Um, I think it actually looks quite nice without the morph actually. He's got a Mikuni carburetor on here, instead of twin carburetors, which would have been um, concentrics, mon um, Amal concentrics. It sounds quite nice, so I'll fire it up for you now. Fuel on. Let me just put the choke on. We've got a lever on that um, carburetor. This has got a, a fold up car um, kickstart. Uh, this wouldn't be a Norton part, I think it's RGM, um, which is quite nice because it folds right out of the way. He's got rather a worn rubber there, but anyway, we'll, we'll start him up. sound nice, it's got quite a bark to it. Now the pea shooters, but these are slightly louder than most. But on that single carburetor, cold, it'll tick over straight away. It's actually a nice bike. And now we've got the high gearing, that will be quite happily cruising on at 60, 70 miles an hour without any effort. A little bit cold, so a little bit lumpy when it's cold. Before the problem was because the clutch got contaminated, when you put it into gear, it will suddenly lurch forward because the clutch wasn't free properly. So now, when we pull the clutch in, So I'll just put it into gear, straight in. When a clutch drags, what that is, basically, if you pull the clutch in, you go and put it into gear, and it'll grate and go forward. But this is fine now, I'll do it by hand. And you can find neutral easily. So it's a nice bike. I'll just, uh, just ride it up here. Agree, it's um, it's a nice riding bike. Thing about these, they will do the mileage. Um, they're comfortable with the ice elastic setup. They're very, very, you know, they don't get the vibration. They really eat the miles up. So no, good bike, good all-round bike, really. Very quickly, I just want to talk to people about the BB Gold Star uh, 34500. Um, we showed you various parts of this engine that need service work. Now, the head, I had the valves out, I've cut the seats, 
I've done the valves on the grind machine, as you've seen before. I have in my hand a composite gasket. Now, I've used the studding to put the head back onto the barrel. And if you look closely, we can see this big gap. I showed you this before. Now, the composite gasket should sit in here, should be squeezed up. But the liner, the top hat of the liner, I think is the wrong thickness. And it's not squeezing down onto the composite gasket. It's just a liner in contact with the inside of the cylinder head. And if someone's going to do that for me, um, it probably will need a rebore. So we will have a better piston than the one that we had in there. Um, so it'll be bored, new piston, and this head sorted out. Now, I've got a request. Anyone that's got a BB crankshaft, uh, a pressed up new crankshaft, because I can't get one. Worst scenario, we could use a B33 crankshaft with Conrod, but I would like a pressed up crank with a Gorilla rod. Um, the guy that used to make these doesn't make them anymore. He's retired, I understand that. But if we could chase one down for the customer, that'd be brilliant because at the moment I'm sourcing the part, sourcing a petrol tank for him, the correct one, uh, chain guard and rear shocks. And we're gonna make this into a nice bike. He's got a standard gearbox, we do need a lay shaft, we can get all the other bits, that's not really a problem but it's really finding the crankshaft. So anyone that has got a spare one, give me a call, because I really appreciate it and the customer would love it to be able to ride it this year, because otherwise we can't get on with it. So that's that. So quickly, the Himalayan, Him, Himalayan Scram. Uh, I've ridden this, so watch the video and then you can see what I think of this it's bike. It's on the main channel of the video, isn't it? Yeah, it's on the main channel. So have a look at that. And you'll be, uh, I think you'll be surprised. Um, spoke very quickly about the Triumph Sprint. We aren't doing anything to that today, but this is going to be a job I'm going to be doing in the next few days for myself between jobs to find out what's going wrong with these forks, where this terrible vibration is when I actually, the forks are compressed, it just bangs and makes awful noises. And there's a little bit of other work that needs to be done, needs, needs a new thermostat. And it's a bike that really will still carry on doing the mileage, so I might as well hang on to it, really. Um, it's not worth a great deal, believe it or not. Um, these are quite a good buy, second-hand. There are a lot of bike there for the money, and um, if you want to do any real mileage, they will certainly do it for you. So, yes, yeah, that's something that's going to be slightly different. So that's it, really. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the Himalayan video.